Hello and welcome to today's presentation, the Congress of Racial Equality, presented by the National Abolition Hall of Fame and Museum, whose mission is to honor anti-slavery abolitionists, their work to end slavery and the legacy of that struggle, and strive to complete the second and ongoing abolition, the moral conviction to end the racism. Still active over 80 years later, the Congress for Racial Equality, otherwise known as CORE, is an American civil rights organization that was established in March of 1942. It was founded by an interracial group of activists in Chicago with the aim of advocating for equal rights for black Americans and promoting racial harmony through nonviolent protest. Over the years, CORE has been instrumental in advancing the cause of civil rights through its various nonviolent protests and movements. Fifty original members founded CORE, of which 28 were men and 22 were women. About one-third of the original 50 were black, and two-thirds were white. This racial makeup illustrates that from the beginning, CORE was interested in promoting interracial cooperation among activists seeking to end discrimination. This diverse group of activists was inspired by the teachings of Mahatma Gandhi, who was fighting for the independence of India at the time through an ideology of nonviolence and civil disobedience. CORE and its members wanted to replicate Gandhi's nonviolent movement in the U.S. to combat racism and segregation through nonviolence, just as Gandhi had challenged British colonialism in India. Therefore, CORE pioneered and was emblematic of the nonviolent movement in America's civil rights struggle. In 1947, CORE would start what would be seen as a precursor for the more well-known 1961 Freedom Rides, called the Journey of Reconciliation, a movement that meant to test whether or not states were honoring the Supreme Court's decision in Morgan v. Virginia, which struck down Virginia state law enforcing segregation on interstate buses because it was unconstitutional. This was tested by having volunteers cross multiple states on buses to see if some of those states will violate the Supreme Court's decision by implementing segregation. Several of these writers were arrested and beaten. Similarly, the Freedom Rides of 1961 were a series of bus trips through the American South to protest segregation in public transportation spaces, such as bus terminals, which had been found to be unconstitutional in Boynton v. Virginia in 1960. CORE organized these trips, and they involved both black and white activists who traveled on buses together to challenge the system of segregation. The Freedom Rides were met with resistance and violence, and several activists were beaten, arrested, or subjected to other forms of physical abuse, such as the bombing of their buses while they were still inside. Despite these challenges, the Freedom Rides helped to bring national attention to the issue of segregation. It was also a demonstration of interracial activism, as white students volunteered to trade trips alongside their black counterparts. By 1961, CORE had established 53 chapters across the United States, and by 1963, CORE had expanded its reach to major urban centers in the Northeast, Midwest, Mid-Atlantic, and West Coast, with multiple chapters on college campuses. Additionally, CORE had active projects and chapters in Louisiana, Mississippi, Florida, South Carolina, and Kentucky. However, despite their growth and progress and the nonviolent activism they sparked, the violence they faced was overwhelming. During the 1964 Freedom Summer, when core activists, among others, traveled to Mississippi to help register black Southerners to vote, thousands of out-of-state and local volunteers faced violence by angry white Southerners. This violence was perpetuated by terrorist groups such as White Citizens Councils and the Ku Klux Klan. Over the span of 10 weeks, the program witnessed the arrest of over 1,000 volunteers, the severe beating of 80, the bombing and burning of black churches and businesses, and the murder of four volunteers. The story of three murdered volunteers particularly angered the organization. James Cheney, Andrew Goodman, and Michael Schwerner, two white and one black volunteer, were arrested on June 21, 1964. After being released, they were ambushed by the KKK who killed them. The two white volunteers, Goodman and Schroener, were shot at point-blank range, while Cheney was beaten and shot three times. Their bodies were later found buried in an earthen dam. 
The report of their deaths shocked the nation and forever altered the trajectory of nonviolent groups like CORE. The murder of these volunteers, on top of the seemingly slow progress of the Freedom Summer Project, led many CORE members to feel disillusion with the movement and the effectiveness of nonviolence. Under the leadership of Floyd McKissick, CORE adapted the Black Power Movement and Black Nationalism, moving away from interracial cooperation to emphasize racial pride and self-determination within the Black community. In conclusion, the Congress for Racial Equality has played a vital role in the American Civil Rights Movement. Its activism and advocacy have helped to bring about important changes, including the end of segregation in public spaces, the protection of voting rights, and the advancement of economic equality. Due to the progress that it has made, CORE remains an active and influential voice in the ongoing fight for racial justice. Today, the organization continues to address a wide range of issues, including police brutality, economic inequality, and voting rights. Its impact on American society has been significant, and CORE remains an important voice in the ongoing struggle for civil rights. Thank you for watching today's presentation. Please help us by completing a brief survey at the link on your screen and also in the video description. Your feedback will help Nahoff receive funding and help plan future projects. Additionally, please contact Nahoff with any questions or comments, or if you're interested in learning more about the organization. Don't forget to follow us on social media, and we hope to see you at our next presentation. Thank you.